Good Wednesday morning, friends. We are glad to join you again this morning for another entry of Daily Assurance. Our Holy Week devotions are underway, and we hope that you are finding them to be helpful as we reflect and as we journey with Jesus this week. This morning, uh, our scripture comes from Mark chapter 14, verses 1 through 11. And I want to read the scripture, and then we will uh, spend a few minutes um, dissecting it a little bit, and then I want to give you space to just be with that scripture this day. But it says in Mark 14, Now the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread were only two days away. And the chief priests and the teachers of the law were scheming to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or the people may riot. While he was in Bethany reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on Jesus' head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, Why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, Jesus said. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing for me. The poor you will always have with you and you can help them at any time you want. But you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare me for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will always be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money. So he watched for an opportunity to hand Jesus over. Now there are some interesting things at work here. In just two verses at the very beginning of this text, Mark shares with us a story of betrayal. The chief priests are scheming to arrest and ultimately kill Jesus. And then the scripture closes with another story of betrayal. One of Jesus' closest friends will give him up for a sum of money. And sandwiched in between those two stories of betrayal is this beautiful story of worship. And it really, truly is an act of worship. This woman takes a very expensive amount of perfume. I want you to envision for a moment something that costs you your entire year's wage. For this woman, it was a jar of perfume. And she broke it, and she poured it all over Jesus. Now, some Gospels tell this differently. In Mark's Gospel, it's the head, and in, in Luke, it's the, the feet. And I envision this as just this beautiful perfume pouring over Jesus' entire body. And in a small enclosed room, I'm sure it was a very fragrant offering. And so we see this beautiful story unfold. Many in the room were upset. They didn't understand the gesture. What's interesting to me is here the religious leaders who should be well acquainted with, with God, with Jesus and what he's all about, are scheming to kill him. We also see in this text that one of Jesus' closest friends, one that should be well acquainted with Jesus, is also a part of that plot. But what we see here is this gracious, abundant offering of worship from a woman with an alabaster jar of pure, wonderful, fragrant perfume, giving to Jesus exactly what Jesus deserves. Everything. And so as we spend time in reflection this week, what are we to offer Jesus? 
this was a sacrificial offering, something that was a big deal. How do we model that in our lives? What do we give? Our time, our witness, our talents. How is it that we model this in our journey this week? Spend some time with this scripture today. Or whenever you can set aside some time, pull out your Bible or pull out your app. Read through the scripture. Maybe even read through the scripture in a couple different translations. Let it speak to you. Let it wash over you. May we, wherever we are, engage in that kind of worship this day. Be blessed, my friends.